Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. And I have today something interesting to show you. Not this stuff you see on the desk, that's from that failed project that I mentioned in my last video. But alas, I couldn't dwell on it for too long because, of course, there's always something new to do. And I decided I wanted to make some fixtures and fittings to hold all the wire and cable that we have dangling in the back of us. You've got probe leads, you've got BNC things, you've got things hanging up, or things that should be hanging up. Basically wires. We've got loads of wires. And my first idea was to create this, which is a standard base. You can see it's a little base and you pop a little o-ring on it. And the idea is it's it's a shaft that then you can put pipe over it to get these standoffs. And it's insanely heavy duty. I know it uh, 3D printing often you don't think of it as heavy duty, but actually when you make things that are comparable to consumer products you can buy like hooks and stuff like that, the 3D printed ones are often way stronger. Um, so you can see this evolved into something different where you have a base which has four screws and a shaft that's fitted to it. And then onto that shaft is an end uh, um, accessory. And you can see here, I've got a hook on this one and it's actually got a hole through it so you can tighten up the screw because this one's screwed on so you can align it at any angle you want and then nip it up. You can probably put a bit of glue on there. Uh, and something I intended to do was, with this was to actually put some weights on it and then test to see how much weight it could take and you can see it's actually quite long I mean I want to make it much shorter this was just a real test to see how long you could print a vertical tower um, and my 3d printer happened to be in with a 0.08 um, nozzle that I'd homemade and that's a 0.08 print so it's quite interesting it's very fast printing that way a little bit rough but very fast um, and the idea was I was just going to put a luggage scale on it and I'm trying, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to try to break it now. You can see, oh, there we go. Whew. So that was quite a bit of weight on there. Um, and you can see then the failure mode and how it breaks. Um, and I in anticipated that actually, I anticipated that. And to prove it, you can see, I do have some later models, uh, again, very fast draft prints, these, but these actually have on the base slightly different features. You can see there, these features are designed to give it more uh, more, um, more, more resistance to the torque for uh, when you have something pushing down on here. But as I said, it's unreasonably long actually. I'm thinking it will be more like that. And you could see I've actually put the features here so that you could fit O-rings again to so give it a really nice uh, interference fit if you didn't want to use the screw in the end. So that's that's the um, where I went for that. But the idea was, of course, it's a system so that there are other options for the end. Um, these actually printed badly because I had a leaky nozzle which caused my printer to offset. So I'm going to have to reprint these. And these are, these are uh, combs, effectively wire combs. Uh, and the idea of if you did have a nice print which didn't jump <laughs> and then you could clear that out, is that you could also mount combs and as you can imagine if you've got things like probe leads you could just quite nicely dash a lot of them through there and then you have a slightly thicker grade again for that fatter wire maybe some coaxes or bnc's so you can imagine along your wall then you could have all of these and you can have them oriented um any which way you want because you might have the cables going in the loop you know if you've got the cables up by the uh, middle of the cable and like this and you're just dangling it you might want it to go up around. Um, and then there's a further evolution of that, which I think is pretty cool, um, which are these. And these are a little end effectors um, version that I wanted to do for a quick cable insertion. And if you look closely, you can see here that it's got an actual articulated uh, like robot hand effectively in a little uh, elastic band which I had to make it's weird I didn't have any elastic bands so I could only find this really old crusty one which snaps uh, and uh, elastic bands are really good at super gluing natural rubber really super glues well fortunately um, and just to show you this in action so imagine you've got this uh, on your wall whatever orientation you need it um, and then you're just going to go like that. You see how it just it's it slides in and it really doesn't want to pop out Especially if it's something wider. So if you imagine something like this It slides in and then you know, I'm putting quite a lot of force to get that back out. So it's, it's a nice little grab 
and I've made a second one just to make sure it wasn't a fluke and no, it's still good. It's a nice little system that because you know, it requires a bit of positive. So if you imagine you had this actually mounted horizontally, for example, you could then push your, your wires in there and they're not going to flop out by accident unless you really you know, get them out like a carabiner basically. So that's that one. Um, but really, the actual star of the show, so to speak, is this because it's literally finished printing. And I thought I would try a, another design of uh, basically end effector. Uh, this one just purely because I wanted to learn how to do spur gears in Fusion. <laughs> so I designed up some spur gears and uh, we're going to test it out. I'm going to grab a bit of my silicone spray just because I th think it might like that. I'm just going to put a, t a kiss of it on those faces because there's no bearings here so we want to make sure it can run. And oh, It is a bit tight. Maybe I should have left a bit more tolerance on that. Oh, but that's okay. That's all right. I like that. Oh, hang on. I've already gone wrong, haven't I? <laughs> now, so I have to be careful when I put this together because I need the teeth to actually mesh properly. Oh, I can't believe that. This, I, I, I can almost cry. This is my, I promise you, my very first time um, making a uh, spur gear and incorporating it into a design you know making a spur gear and incorporate both first times for both but i mean look at that <laughs> it reminds me of some sort of handcuffs almost doesn't it you've got the right size wrist that's crazy and that oh you can see i actually force put quite a lot of force to get that out right cool let's finish it off hopefully i've got some fittings we could use so I always keep these bits and pieces when I've been dismantling something. So you've got some spares and I've got a couple of machine screws. That would be nice if they work. We can try that. And um, what you've got is these little caps that go on the top. And I know you won't be able to see it and it's not particularly clear, but those little shafts actually are sit proud by about um, a third of a millimeter so that when you put your cap on and squeeze it in, it won't stop those, it won't apply friction to those. So let's see if there's any chance we can get this started. Because normally I use a self-tapper. These are a machine screw, so they're blunt on the end. It just takes a bit of effort, but it's, because it's PLA, you can normally just start cutting in a new thread, like so. I've got to find a way of holding it. I want to make one of those fractal vices. They, they look quite good for holding weird stuff. Hmm, maybe I will have to get some self tappers. Nope, it's all right. He's got it. He's got it. Let's get that going. You can see it. it's working its way. That's the thing with a machine thread, though. It's, it's a lot of turns. It depends, really. I've not really experimented enough with the PLA prints to know what's better yet. Um, as most of my fittings and hardware seems to be recycled, it's, it's quite hard to do that too. But I can tell from this already that it's providing quite a nice amount of bite. And I don't think it should go anywhere. I'm going to tighten it up just to test that theory about the interference. Yeah, you can see it's turning and it's not even the actual cap isn't turning at all because it's sitting just straight flush with the end of that shaft. Rather wondrous. Now you will notice, uh, and excuse me continuing to work while I talk, but if you look closely at that you will notice there are a couple of nubbins sticking up and the idea on that is I wanted to put a spring or another bit of elastic so that it can uh, keep itself shut. So hopefully that we could do that same thing where you can push something in and it opens a bit, lets it in and then slams shut. But I'm not sure you'd be able to achieve that because the the gears, those spur gears, are going to provide probably quite a lot of interference. Not want that to happen, but we'll see. Right, let's just try that. And interestingly enough, the thing that allows you to design those gears in Fusion is a Python script. So, who knew? If you can if you can run a Python script, you can probably do all sorts of parametric wonders. 
but I will be on the lookout for nice spring set because the spring set I've got is a bit too heavy duty. All the springs have so much bite on them. Yeah, that's good. I'm just sort of focusing on these. So watch these caps as I put it. You'll see that they don't turn and that's exactly what you want. Oh, it's loosening up. It's loosening up. Hooray. Now, yeah, I, I actually feel that that probably would work with an elastic if I could find a suitable piece. But fortunately, it all tends to perish. So that's obviously a very loose piece of elastic. Let's see if we can double it up without uh, snapping it. Ooh, we can. Oh! <laughs> so it'll sort of cam over at a certain point. You see there? <laughs> you know what? I, I'm not. I'm not hating this. I think that's pretty cool. Let's see. Yes, that is a wonder. So I'd say the only uh, th change of design that I'd probably want to make is I could just make this jaw a little bit uh, more accessible. So if you see on the previous design, it had much more of a V shape, so that allowed it to start being pushed apart earlier. Um, now, the benefits of the new design over the old design, you can see here because of, oh, by the way, both of these are designed to be printed without supports um, straight on the bed, which is amazing, right? That's nice and quick. But you can see one of the issues with this design, you do end up with the pivot point here on the end. So the actual jaws focus points are off center. And that's why you have this little bit here. For its purpose, it's okay. But this is much stronger because you can see it is actually just pinching down on the uh, same plane. And honestly, it actually feels a lot more sturdy. I think this whole arrangement here, okay, it uses more fittings, it uses another screw, it uses as more moving parts, but that part is cool as heck. It does that. I do like this snapping turtle thing. Um, but just having a look here, if you wanted to have it, you can't have it really get any further than that if you want it to just automatically um, shut. So I'm thinking you could put a feature here to stop that. You don't need all of these gear teeth. So you could have something here where it's just literally a um, keyway and it just hits a stop. So it just doesn't go any further than that, which is probably reasonable actually. You know, you don't really need it to go. Um, now with both of these designs, there is a very neat opportunity to add a servo and make these actual robotic arm type end effectors, which I think would be pretty cool. So this one's this one's got a very light throw. I mean, this is this would be beautiful for one of those little, I want to say nine gram. I don't know how they measure those servos, but you know those little servos. I think that would be fine for that. This one would need a bit of a bigger guy course um, but you could even have something incorporated into the design so it actually just motors here properly which I think would be neat you probably wouldn't need the elastic band so uh, yeah I know it's a bit of a departure from the usual stuff but hey what's usual anymore you know what's usual it's always just making something um, and that's what I've been up to so hopefully that's been of some interest to you oh that's interesting to me that this didn't fit. So let's just have a quick play while we're here. God, that is a tight old fit. Let's see if we can figure this out. So that one is very tight. That is nice and loose. But interestingly, they are both uh, printed from the same design. But this is from my um, Anycubic Chiron. And this is from my Anycubic Cossel. And I can tell you, just looking at it, the Cossel has got a bit of a better dimensional accuracy. It's, it's a lot faster. The Cossel doesn't hang around. And I think what's happened is you can see this has actually sunk. Cossel is a heck of a lot faster and it can definitely do those overhangs quicker. So that's a bit, a little bit of a gotcha, depending on how you're going to print it. So I might need to get myself a, a drill bit and just, just run it through there. That's a very minor amount of post pressings but the goal, of course, in 3D printing is to have no post processing if you can help it. So please uh, comment down below if you've got any interesting experiences or observations of anything you've seen today. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. That lets me know you've enjoyed it. And of course, you can always continue the conversation over on the Discord. Um, links down below.
thank you very much for watching.